Thanks and praise be to God. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to worship at Central Church. We gather in the name of Jesus Christ. It is my joy to welcome each of you in his name, including those who are joining online at home. Thank you for being with us. For those of you who are here in person following the service, please stop at the Fellowship Hall. There will be some light refreshments for everyone. That coffee smelled wonderful this morning. So I hope you will uh, take some time to catch up with one another. The Sunday schools will begin half an hour following the conclusion of the service. A fall Bible study begins this week, Tuesday evening or Thursday uh, morning, in the time of your choice. Anyone can come and take part. Everyone is welcome. Uh, this Wednesday, beginning at 9 o'clock, we'll have a church cleanup day. If you can uh, lend any amount of time to clean up the church, to spruce up this place, uh, bring any tools necessary, and we'll see you here at church. Any other announcements that you would like to lift up before we have our time of worship? Good morning, again. Let's all stand for our call to worship, please. <clears throat> May those who love your salvation say continually, great is the Lord. May our hearts be because we trust in God's Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. Our opening hymn is number 144, This Is My Father's World. Remain standing for our responsive reading from Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. Ask 
ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Or he will be angry and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Let us pray together in unison our opening prayer. We believe, O Lord, that you have not abandoned us to the dim light of our own reasons to conduct us to happiness, but that you have revealed in the Holy Scripture whatever is necessary for us to believe and to practice. How noble and excellent are your precepts, how sublime and enlightening your truth, how persuasive and strong the motives, how powerful the assistance of your holy religion. Our delight shall be in your statutes, and we will not forget your word. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 from 11. Isaiah, in this passage, speaks of events that will occur, occur after the captivity. They have been carried into Babylon since 586 B.C. And this includes the decree of Cyrus to release the remnant captives and to allow them to return to Jerusalem after he conquered Babylon. But Isaiah also foretells the coming of the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, and describes his life and death with incredible detail. Isaiah also speaks about the coming of the new heavens and earth when God's people will be completely restored because all believers will participate in this new world to come and we can have confident hope in the future. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your Lord, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. She has received, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway from our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, uh, no, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Friends, let's take a moment of sharing our joys and concerns. And um, first of all, thank you for your prayers. As I've safely traveled to and from Korea for about 10 days, and I am grateful for the ministry of the Reverend uh, Coleman Tyler, who was our preacher for the past two Sundays, as well as for your ministries 
that uh, continue the work of the church within and outside of the worship service. Uh, so Lord willing, I will be going back one more time to Korea, uh, making two long trips in two months because somehow, uh, if you haven't heard yet, I've met and got engaged to somebody living in that country since the long trips and the wedding will be in October. So I'm grateful to God for this next chapter in my journey and I will need your prayers, I believe. So thank you for your prayers already. Um, let's continue to have our prayers. Let's pray for the justice and peace in our world. Everywhere we hear news, news of war and oppression and conflicts and we lift them up to the Lord. Uh, places in Ukraine, in Russia, in Ethiopia, where active conflicts rage, um, prison states that are all over the world, people who are persecuted for their faith. Let's remember them. Um, let's remember Betty Stewart, who is recovering from heart valve replacement surgery. Please pray for a complete and full recovery. Um, Susan Ely is back in a rehab hospital per Steve. So we want to remember Steve Ely and his mother, Susan. We lift her up to the Lord in prayer. We continue to our prayers for Ben Lee and Hal Herzler, who is continuing at a rehabilitation hospital in Yorktown. So our best hope is that she, he may come home this Friday, but let's pray that that will be the case. Um, any others, any others joys or concerns you wish to share? Yes, Dee? Thank you, Martha, holding up those certificates of achievements for our United Methodist women, their wonderful ministry. Yes, that was recognized in our recent district meeting. Martha, thank you for your servant leadership. And we rejoice uh, with, in God for the ministries of our wonderful uh, sisters in faith. Thanks be to God. I thought it, yes, Beverly. Yes, thanks be to God that uh, uh, Kenny and Bev's daughter uh, came through some tests very well, so we hope that she'll continue to do well. Yes, Christine. Yes, welcome. So good to have you with us. Christine has brought her friends from the mountains, as she calls, uh, uh, as uh, she is uh, spending parts of her time near Blacksburg. And uh, so welcome. We, we were grateful to have you with us, visit with us. Any others? Yes, Chris. Uh, I have one that was a blessing from Beth about the yesterday morning. She was ready to go out and vote in our town in a soccer game. And uh, I saw a corporal in the creek in front of our house. And I'm sorry, I just choked on this. So two years ago, he had told me to look out for the backyard. 
second of all, congratulations on getting this thing. Thank Have you. A good Thank you very much. So, uh, no, I'll bring her back here, right? Uh, Lord willing, yes. I'm going to say by faith. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I hope so. Um, yes, I, I've, I've sensed the grace of God uh, every step of the way, so I'm thankful for that. And uh, I think that she wouldn't mind uh, coming to a community where you can have those special wildlife encounters every now and then. Uh, not to mention it's wonderful people. Yes, Martha. Yes, grateful for every member of the United Methodist Women for that wonderful accomplishment. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we have lived by your word, and your kindness has sustained us these days. Though the wrong oft seems so strong, yes, Lord, you are the ruler yet, and you work diligently to help us and to bring good and truth into our world. So we bow and offer our humble praise and thanks to you. We thank you for being our God, and we thank you for making us your people through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us, helping us and leading us to live by your word. Thank you for the life that is in him, light that is in him that we receive daily. We pray that you will come among us once again in your spirit and word today and give us your kingdom, your kingdom of light and life, comfort, new life, love, holiness. Oh Lord, give us your kingdom. Come and reign among us through your spirit. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the ministries of this church and for this community, for the faith and hope and love that is here by your grace, we give you thanks, O oh God, for this church. And thank you, O oh God, for the joy of human love, brothers, sisters, parent, child, spouse, friends. We give you thanks, O oh God, for love comes from you. Thank you for keeping watch over us. We pray that you now hear our prayers once again and reach out to those who are sick with your special grace. For the sake of your compassion and mercy, Heavenly Father, bring your healing and strength upon them, we pray, as we name them in our hearts before you. Almighty God, we lift up to you, Betty Stewart. We lift up to you, Susan Ely. We lift up to you, Almighty God, Ben Lee. We lift up to you, Hal Hertzler. We pray to you, Almighty God, for Ken Lee. For others, O oh Lord, who are on our list of prayers, who are on our mind, Almighty God, we lift them up to you, to your throne of grace. Grant your healing wholeness. Lord, walk with them in their trials. We pray that you would grant recovery to those who are, Lord, recovering from surgeries. We pray for your peace and guidance for those who are troubled and lonely. We pray for your presence for those who are anxious. 
we pray for your mercy for those under war and oppression. Let these destruction seas, O God, have mercy upon them, save them, and deliver them from evil. We pray for those in public services and those in our governments. Mercifully lead them, enlighten them, and bless them, O Lord, for the sake of your people. We pray for our children and our grandchildren scattered in places. We pray that you, they will be guided by your mercy, guided by your word. We pray, O God, that you would grant us grace to love our loved ones truly and deeply. Receive honor and glory among us, O Lord. We now continue to pray as your son Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's take a moment in bringing up our offerings at this time. Gracious God, receive the gifts of our faith and our hearts along with these offerings. We offer them in union with Christ's offering for us. Sanctify them, make holy our lives, we pray. May your kingdom come and may we serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. We are also hearing today Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, the first 16 verses. We're beginning Matthew's 5 through 7, uh, typically called the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to journey through the Sermon on the Mount for the next several weeks. And this is the uh, beginning verses of that chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Starting this week, we are delving into a sermon given by none other than Jesus himself, if you will. The Sermon on the Mount is the nickname given to Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, which has a series of groundbreaking teachings from Jesus. It's been so named because verse 1 has Jesus going up the mountain. It's reminiscent of Moses on the mountain, bringing the commandments of God. The Sermon on the Mount is not a talk that Jesus gave once and was done with. Instead, it is really a collection of Jesus' teachings, sort of like a campaign speech that has all the major points in it. So these lessons sets the tone for what Jesus stands for. If you are a disciple of Jesus, these must not be missed. In fact, these have also long been part of our culture and our collective consciousness. People are familiar with, for example, the golden rule, the Beatitudes, judge not, turn the other cheek, go an extra mile, to name just a few. At the same time, I invite for us to hear them as if they will greatly challenge our long-held assumptions, practices, behaviors, and thoughts. Let the word of Jesus blow them apart, so to speak. How many of us, for example, have lived as if being angry with our brother or sister would have us be criminally liable? But Jesus says here in his message, Anyone who is angry with a brother or a sister is subject to judgment. And anyone who says you fall will be in danger of the fire of hell. We may be familiar with these words, but merely knowing them is not the end goal. Jesus warns, whoever hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise builder who built on rock. Whoever does not act on them, however, is like a foolish builder built on sand. And we know what happens to houses built on sand. I look forward to journeying through these chapters with you and together growing as followers of Jesus. So what does Jesus say in these lessons? He begins with what really is the central message of his preaching, that is a new kingdom that is on the horizon, a kingdom of God, a kingdom of heaven that is near. So he begins by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you read the Bible, you know that Matthew, what Matthew calls the kingdom of heaven is also called the kingdom of God in other gospels. Let's pause here and think about kingdoms first, because kingdoms and nations hold sway over people's lives. Even today, this week, the Russian government decided that they will conscript some 300,000 men and send them into a war in Ukraine. 
and young men trying to escape the country have flooded the borders and the airports. Whatever is ruling that country has driven tens of thousands of people to their death in the past year or so. In Jesus' days, there was one kingdom that was towering over all, and that was Rome. It ruled over nations, including Judea and Israel, and you could not ignore it. And Rome was a kingdom ruled by swords and spears, as well as by money, not to mention the human pride. Rome's greatest honors, for example, were bestowed upon its military heroes, the conquering generals who got to have a parade through the streets of the city while uh, showing off their captives in chains. It was called triumphs. Rome brutally suppressed any that resisted, and it crucified its enemies. That was the kingdom that ruled the, ruled the land in the time of Jesus. But Jesus preached that the kingdom of heaven was near. Think about that. A kingdom of God on earth. What would that be like? And who would get to be part of it? But the prophets have been foretelling it for centuries, just as we heard today from the prophet Isaiah. First of all, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is for the poor in spirit. Incidentally, Luke's gospel is simply says that blessed are, blessed are the poor, period. But here it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are hungry, empty, and humble within, desiring something more in life, desiring things of God, they are prime for the kingdom of God, says Jesus. Why? It's because they are ready to live in a way that completely relies on God. They desire God himself, and that's where heaven is. Heaven, or kingdom of God, is where people live by God, live on God, and live with God. People, on the other hand, otherwise generally desire to be rich in spirit and in life. They naturally want to have the resources, the means, and the power. Only those can take them only so far in this life. And that is also why we have conflicts and jealousy and wars and resentment. But in the kingdom of heaven, where God reigns, people delight themselves in God. They trust their heavenly Father for their daily bread, for their every need, for God knows what they need before they ask him. And who will experience this reality? Those who are poor in spirit. I don't fast as often as I used to these days, but when I do, that's because my hunger for God has outweighed my hunger for food. And we all run into times when we feel terribly in need of God one time or another. But the truth is that we should rely on God. We should look to God in our ordinary times, not just in our extraordinary moments. We do not live by bread alone as the scripture says, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You and I are alive today because God has said so. You and I have what we need. We have our daily bread because God has said so. Blessed are those who can trust God for their ordinary life. Money and wealth can do much in life, but they cannot do everything. And Often they get in the way of us doing the most important thing to make life work, which is to trust in God wholeheartedly. 
Jesus says that the time is coming when people will live by God, live on God, live with God. Therefore, blessed are the poor in spirit. When we see the rest of the Beatitudes, we see the same theme. God is coming to reign. His kingdom is at hand. For example, blessed are those who mourn or those who sorrow, for they will be comforted, says Jesus. We know life has many sorrows and griefs. Which government, whose administration can Comfort us in our loss. But the kingdom of heaven is at hand and people will be comforted, Jesus says. There will be a love that is deeper than our sorrows, a hope that goes beyond even death. And and here is really a kicker for people of our time. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. I think Rome would have disagreed as well. Augustus, the first emperor of the Roman Empire, was not known for his meekness. Something would have to radically change in the world for the meek and the gentle to receive the land. But when the kingdom of heaven comes, which it is, the meek, not the cruel, will receive the land. A new kingdom indeed. Is that ever possible? Well, Jesus was crucified, and yet his followers have outlasted empires and kings. Alexander the Great, surprise, is no longer welcome in the world. What do the Taliban and the ISIS and the North Korean army and other oppressive regimes have in common? They like to brandish their weapons, don't they? Seems that they cannot be photographed without holding their big, bad weapons. Now, today, many believe that those with the biggest weapons and the harshest attitudes prevail, but those powers can last only in the absence of truth when the truth has been sown in people's minds and hearts through Jesus Christ, somehow, in some ways, the oppression will give way to peace. Jesus further says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Isn't that amazing? Can any kingdom, can any administration, nation, be free of of corruption and injustice, crimes and immorality? Can any religion? But a new kingdom is coming where people's hunger for righteousness will be filled, says Jesus. There will be righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. People will be reconciled to God, reconciled to each other, and reconcile to themselves. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Somehow, as we will see in the many parables that Jesus gave, mercy will be the cornerstone of God's reign. You can see why, because the only way the holy God will reign over us and live with us is by mercy. And God is merciful. God has shown us mercy. Therefore, it is those who show mercy that are blessed. Jesus said, for example, if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, until this point, it was generally accepted that people cannot see God, and there have been expressed warnings that People who did would not live. So this is a new declaration that people will get to see God. Specifically, the pure in heart will, says Jesus. This is a wonderful, a wonderful word from Jesus. The pure in heart will see God. This does not mean that somehow people will 
make out the face of God like they do with humans. I believe it means that people will recognize and see the presence of God so clearly as if seeing God because God is going to be present in this world intimately. Beginning with Jesus who said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, he said. Others saw in Jesus nothing but a humble preacher, but Mary worshipped him by pouring out a jar of perfume worth someone's yearly pay. She poured it all in that place to anoint him. There is a song that says, where charity and love prevails, there God is found. 1 John 4.12 says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Author Victor Hugo echoed this when he wrote, to love another person is to see the face of God. Jesus has shown us the love of God and his love is present in this world through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the pure in heart will see it and they will know that they have seen God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. In Rome, in other places, conquerors are worshipped as sons of God. But a new kingdom must be coming because the peacemakers will be honored. This kingdom, however, does not come all at once. It grows like a seed in the ground. Therefore, the next word. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that includes when people revile you, persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, says Jesus. In fact, the scripture says anyone who desires to live a holy life will be persecuted in some way or another. Rejoice and be glad, says Jesus, for your reward is great in heaven. Kingdom of heaven is at hand and is coming. Jesus continues to emphasize that. The kingdom of heaven will come and judge the earthly kingdoms. And he said it against the background of Rome and its reign of terror. But how is the kingdom of heaven coming? Well, the kingdom of heaven that Jesus speaks so eloquently here first arrived when Jesus himself came into the world. He refused to turn stones into bread after fasting for 40 days, instead hoping in God and his word. He fed thousands with only five loaves of bread and two fish. He healed the sick and cast out evil spirits. Wherever Jesus went there, the reign of God took hold. Jesus also taught us that God was our Father in heaven. The Heavenly Father knows what we need before we ask him, he said, and he hears our prayers. Finally, Jesus suffered in this world, and he died on the cross, even though he was the Son of God. His blood of faith and obedience atones for our sin. And he has reconciled us to God, to one another, and to ourselves. It is not our works, but the grace of Jesus Christ and his atoning blood that puts us in peace with God and therefore ready to receive God's reign and kingdom in this world. It is Jesus Christ today that allows us to join the life in the kingdom. So let the poor in spirit find all that they need in Jesus in his grace, who overcame death and comforts those who mourn. Because Jesus lived and died and rose again in this world, the love of God and the truth of God now lives among us. Because Jesus has showed us mercy, 
We can show mercy. We can speak truth in love. And in him and in his love, we see God. To be precise, it is because the Holy Spirit is given in Jesus' name that the kingdom of heaven is here. And blessed are those who enter it today through repentance and faith. And Jesus calls them the salt of the earth, the light of the world. There are many ways in which one can make a difference in this world, but it begins with knowing God's love and truth in Jesus Christ. It begins with truly and earnestly repenting of our pride and our self-centeredness. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, says Romans 8, 14. The creation itself longs for their appearing. So the Sermon on the Mount begins with the declaration of the kingdom of God that is coming. Jesus declares who belongs to that kingdom. Are you living the life of the kingdom of God? Next, we will continue to look at the law and order that governs the kingdom, but the kingdom of God is coming, says Jesus, and it is here. And through the Holy Spirit, Jesus continues to be its door, its king, and its life. Let us pray together. Let us pray in light of the message read and given today. Jesus Christ is the same today as he was and as he will be. Believe that, believe that he is speaking today through the Holy Spirit. Make your confession to him. Ask him to come into your life and lead your way into his kingdom. Send us your Holy Spirit, O God, for you delight to give your children your kingdom. Open our eyes and see your presence among us and help us live by you and live with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us sing our hymn together, number 733, Marching to Zion. May we stand as we're able.
friends, as you grow in Christ this week, live as citizens of his heavenly kingdom. May the Spirit of God give you peace, and may the grace of Jesus Christ overflow in your life in love and faith. Amen.